my style of videos is kind of like all over the place, like a montage. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be a linear process. Hello and welcome to Where the Living Room Used to Be, a podcast about Rhode Island's music scene. Hey everyone, it's James. For this episode, I was able to catch up with live music photographer and videographer David Lawler. We talk about some of the artists that he's worked with over the years. Plus, we get into his process and the techniques behind how he shoots, as well as what he's looking to bring to Rhode Island as a whole. His company, Run of the Mill, will be hosting an art exhibit Thursday, May 4th at Sharks Event Center at Central Falls Landing. So please come and see some of his work, and I hope you enjoy learning more about his career in this episode. As always, please feel free to tell a friend about this podcast. You can follow me on Instagram, and also leave a rating or review wherever you're listening right now. Thanks. Well, my grandfather had this old film camera, and I used to always just like look through the viewfinder just Mm -hmm. to see what was in there. And then I guess the first thing I really got into was videography before I got into photography. And then when I got to college, I was introduced more to photography and like the, the mechanics of it and trying to learn long exposure photographs, photography. Um, So yeah, that's pretty much how I really got into like the whole moving picture and still like photography. Okay. But when you were looking through that viewfinder, was there any thought behind it or you just were naturally like interested in, in looking th- at the world through that uh, yeah, small think, window in a sense? Yeah. So there was this one memory that I can remember. I was at some type of Indian festival type thing at someone's home. that, And I remember I was with my grandfather and he had his film camera and I'd like borrow it just to like look through it but not really mm-hmm. have any idea the concept of it. But yeah, that was like one of the early memories and then using like a VHS camera and just like taking like home movies with that at such a young age. Yeah, like how old were you uh, like that you're oh, referring God. to now? Uh, I was tiny. I was like staying at my grandparents all the time. So I don't know how young, maybe like seven years old. Oh, okay. Like that yeah and where was this where uh you grew up in north providence is that correct or i grew up in north providence but i spent a lot of time in johnson rhode island at my grandparents where okay. they yeah. kind of off of harford ave and like bishop hill road but um yeah i was i was staying a lot of i spent a lot of time out there growing up but yeah i grew mm-hmm. up in north providence most of my life yeah mm-hmm. And how much was a camera in your hand? I mean, you mentioned that you started learning more when you went to college, but were you shooting a lot prior to that? Uh, you know, video work, photography work, or anything like that? Well, or, not really. Or did you just kind of fall into it in school? Yeah, so I kind of like fell more into it when I got to high school. But like from the time that I used my grandparents' cameras, the VHS and like the I didn't really use the film SLR camera, but I just like would look through it. Mm -hmm. I used it for a bit and then I stopped somewhere in grade school. And then when I got to high school, that's when I picked up another one of their cameras and used that a lot for video. Mm -hmm. And I used photography too. So about sophomore year of high school, we took a family trip out to Italy and England and I used that camera a lot and just like documented that trip. And nice. then after that, in high school, me and my friends would make breakdance videos and parkour videos. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then when I was in high school, my senior year, I picked up the camera more and did like um, narrative filmmaking. 
Uh huh. And experimental films, yeah. Nice, nice. Do you remember the first time you shot something related to music? Yeah, I think like really related to music and the music scene would have to be when I started doing music videos my mm -hmm. freshman or sophomore year of college. I would do like music videos for like fifty dollars for like random artists that needed it at the time. Yeah. Or like yeah. if you did like a videographer to like document their concert performances and like other things, I would like just do it for like pocket change. Yeah. But yeah the first person I did a music video for, it might have been C's Luciano, which is a rapper who is a rapper from Providence. And then I got into like all these other like um musicians that um it just wasn't really my thing like it was like a bunch of hip-hop videos and like the majority of them i did not enjoy doing um because i just wasn't comfortable but i did a good chunk of them and i got to meet some people so it was cool mm -hmm. i mean i at one point when i was in college i think my sophomore year like i really wanted to be like a music uh uh, musicians like videographer like traveling photographer and just like document okay. their music scene from like for like musicians that were like just starting out in the scene which was a lot of fun like back in 2009 2010 was around the time when like Wiz Khalifa like Big Sean really got into the music scene and uh -huh. like I remember I think it was Wiz Khalifa had a videographer I think his name was like Bill Padino, Padino or something, Paul Dino. And he just like made a lot of like behind the scenes yeah. video for like these musicians for fun. And I was like, oh, I want to do like those day in the life of these music artists and just like going to concerts around the country or like the world and just like mm -hmm. document like fun documentary style videos. Yeah. But I never got to that point. But well, I would say, I mean, I'd kind of skip ahead. You and I recently collaborated uh, on a mini documentary about the Strange Famous Records show that just happened at the Met uh, that had Sage Francis and Black Lick and Jesse the Tree yeah. and Mopes. Um, yeah, so I mean, granted, yes, you're not, you weren't in a bus with them and stuff like that, but like, how was mm -hmm. that experience for you of, you know, having, uh, you know, little snippets of that of like what? took place that day you know from people connecting yeah. and talking to fans and the live performance yeah i thought personally it brought me back to the days when i used to work for cumulus providence which is a local radio station hub over in riverside i believe mm -hmm. um all right on right off a uh, wampanoag trail and when i was there like the most the the highlight of working there as like a street team intern was going to concerts, photographing them and taking videos or being able to meet some of the musicians at the radio station and, and conduct, not conduct the interviews, but just shoot the interviews mm -hmm. and just like those like digital content. But like being back at the Met, like that was one of the places that I got to go shoot for the radio station from time to time. So it was like really cool to be back in there and just like running around trying to capture that moment. And mm -hmm. honestly, it's actually really fun to see you in your element and like how excited you were mm -hmm. as like a kind of like a music from not a promoter, like those like that's a different that's not the right word, but like being able to see you like interact with all the guys that you've like talked to, like mm -hmm. just through like social media or through like your podcast, which was really cool. And so like it just brought me back to those days where I just like get to go and shoot musicians and just have fun with it and being able to like once i get back to editing those clips from that show it's going to be a lot of fun to like have that hip-hop feel to it and, mm -hmm. and intersect it with like different content from that night and like i haven't even looked at all that footage but like we have over over like 300 gigabytes of footage so it's going to be fun to go through it wow. and see what we have yeah nice nice uh, but yeah, with that, I mean, I'm assuming there has to be some different skills that you need to have when you're shooting live music, you know, versus like portrait photography or, uh, you know, landscape photography or whatever. Like, obviously there's some yeah. like basic rudiments, but when you're shooting live music, um, can you talk about 
uh, what that is for you or what, you know, you need to know um, yeah. to capture these, these moments that are happening in a split second. And, you know, so like what, uh, what do you, you know, what have you learned kind of from, from that experience? And um, so shooting in venues can be hard because they are typically dark, whether it be for photo or video. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to photo and video, I try to use a lens that has a very wide aperture. So I have a Canon RF lens. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter, but its aperture is super wide open at a 1.2, which allows mm -hmm. as much light you could possibly need. And mm -hmm. the type of camera I have, you can shoot at a higher ISO, which I look as like artificial light to help brighten the picture. Mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty good in low, low light situations. And you have to like, Oh, you have to like compensate your shutter speed. So you have to have a, a bit of a faster shutter speed. So your subject, cause they're moving around and performing, they're moving faster. So it's like having to like, make sure that that is set at a proper speed, but also allowing in as much light. So there's a lot of mechanics to it. So yeah. it becomes challenging, even though shooting video isn't as bad. But photo photography could be a little trickier, especially with the movement and trying to capture that one frame at a good frame rate without yeah. it, you know, distorted or something. But it's a lot of fun and being on stage, especially for like at the Met um, for the Sage Francis show. I don't know because like when I get to to these performances where they have like multiple acts. Like I got to see how Mopes perform. I got to see how Black Lick perform. I got to see how Jesse the Tree perform and then Sage. So it was like interesting to see the different types of personality. And of all the people that were performing, I really liked how Black Lick performed because mm -hmm. he seemed to be a little bit more wilder. He had hair flowing. Um, and then also like Jesse the Tree, like I'd never met this person in life, but I've heard about him through like social media and like mm -hmm. facebook and instagram so like when i saw how tall he was i was like oh wow he, he's, <laughs> he's a not lying yeah yeah <laughs> he's a and like i had no idea that's where maybe where the name came from but i was just like man like all these and like black lick was like super tall he like reminded yeah, yeah. me of eddie and like like just seeing like the the musicians like mannerisms and like how they like perform and hold themselves on stage is always a good time. So like, mm -hmm. for example, like when black lick went on stage, I want to make sure I could try to get down center and try mm -hmm. to shoot up. And then the other thing is trying to like use your environment. So like at most venues, they have different types of lights and I really enjoy how the lights hit inside of the Met. It also reminds me of like, uh, like Lupo's or the, now the strand like they have different types of like entertainment lights that can create different effects in the camp not in the camera but like on the digital photo using like a different type of aperture if it's a wide open aperture you'll have like bokehs in the background of the artist or mm -hmm. just depending on like how the lights are set up and how they perform during the events mm -hmm. can create really cool effects for your photos and videos so mm -hmm. i tried getting some of that while I was shooting, which is also a lot of fun to like play around with like what light is in your environment and how mm -hmm. you can put the subject in the photo. Mm -hmm. But are those things like you just kind of mentioned the different personalities of people, like are those yeah. things that you like take into consideration or pay attention to as they perform and say, Oh, I, I've, you know, yeah. kind of, you know, whether know that you know this artist or not, but you just start to say, all right, I want to, in order to, yeah. you know, document their own personality are you kind of shifting what you're doing to to better do yeah that? i think if i see someone do something that makes me want to be like i need to capture that moment mm -hmm. like that is something i've noticed and i will put more attention more attention to details and seeing how that pans out during their performance because i think because like black lick is like a an excellent example because like he's ha like he has like a rugged voice his like mm -hmm. mannerisms the way he holds himself like even just seeing like photos of him like through his instagram feed he always has kind of like that look that's like yeah more he's like, like using his hand out front and yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, like you exactly, you know exactly what I'm saying. So like seeing that, like you're definitely gonna want to try to capture that because mm -hmm. even if it's just a photo, like you'll catch a lot of emotion in that. Mm -hmm. Um, where like some other people might just be like, you know, bobbity boop boop just, bop, bop, hip hop. Yeah, one, yeah. Two, um, which is okay. Like that's just a part of their performance and like how they hold themselves. But like mm -hmm. see someone that has like a really interesting personality, like yeah. I want to try to capture that. And yeah. I see that throughout like a bunch of different artists that I've like gotten to like see through like the radio station or even just like through like some of the music videos I shot. Like there was this one kid, a local Lowe's. He had a pretty raspy like, just like a nice voice and the way that he hold himself, like you could tell he was like from the street. So like uh -huh. being able to like capture that makes it more entertaining for the video or photo aspects because you're yeah. seeing something that's more rugged and real. Mm -hmm. um, and when I see that and like a musician, I want to try capturing that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds hard what you're doing. Like, oh. uh, like <laughs> you know, uh, I guess I just bring that up. I'm just, you know, you need to, you know, balance a lack of light with, you know, trying to capture all these different things, trying to be mm -hmm. like on point, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, just say now, just big up to you, you know, to, you know, James Lestowski and Kayla Chin and, uh, you know, Small Fry and everyone else that's out like doing live photography. Like if you're an artist, if you're a musician and people do this and like, you know, yeah. show them love because it, it might just seem kind of cool when they send you some photos and you can use them on Instagram. But like, it's yeah. all of this I, thought I that thought needs to go into it of actually making it look cool, you know, uh, and yeah. and like, you know, years of practice and good gear and stuff like that. Like, hmm. um, yeah, I to be honest, I didn't, I didn't realize all that stuff needed to like really happen. You know, granted, I'm not mm -hmm. a very good photographer, you know, um, and, but like just how much <laughs> thought, <laughs> how much needs to go into that, like fine line balance of, of yeah. you know, uh, just working with light and and the really the lack of it um or it's like so super that, bright lights on people's faces as well of trying to balance the bat dark background with a bright light in someone's face right you know so i met that girl uh what did you say kayla kayla yeah what's her last kayla. name chin kayla yep. chin yeah. well, i met her at the show um yeah but i saw her shooting and i was like shoot this is awesome cuz she was using different i think it was like different types of glass or some type of filter to like help change the scenery and make it like even more interesting and i was like mm -hmm. ah like i've seen stuff like that on like some of the other shoots that i've done for like jewelry mm -hmm. but it was like pretty cool to see that like in action how she can kind of manipulate the scene just by like holding like a glass mirror or something like oh yeah the, like create yeah. some like artificial light or i don't even know it's just like a cool effect but it was really nice to meet her and i just started yeah, she's fantastic uh, yeah i just started following her on instagram so it's nice to also meet other people in this field mm -hmm. with like similar interest or passion so patience is a virtue Virtue is a mean between two extremes, one of excess, one of deficiencies. Patience is a virtue. Virtue is a dirty stain. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Isn't worth the pain? A virtue. Virtue of the pageant. This is not a love palette. You suggested that we um to get me better again. That is unless if we um get together again. That ain't gonna happen never again. Some of all wishes to your nutritionist, dietitian, and pharmacist, the person trainer, your accomplices. It's a thought crime, could a group think and dot this online Difference between what is and isn't Business and friendship, parental assistant and an assistant Permanent solution and a quick fix Pit body and sound mind Hundred hour weeks, dangerous and all to downtime Cut a lot to law book, you're not an author But kill your persecution complex and don't make you a martyr Come to say our goal and cross, you don't want the border Lose the vocation, not a fire source Like when I was real, I wasn't meant to be proud. Duly noted, you'll be quoted in the eulogy. The beat pass part of poetry between you and me. No one knows the difference between confession, conjecture, prosody, needed to be lectured. But yeah, I mean, you're talking about some music videos. Like, who were some of the other people more recently that you've worked with? Um, 
to uh, uh, create that type of work? <laughs> um, so I guess like when I was in college, I did some music videos for like C's Luciano, but he was really cool to work with. Um, like I try to find a voice that really sounds good and he has a good voice. And then I did some stuff for this kid at Loco Los. I did mm -hmm. some other projects for, oh, it was a lot of hip hop videos. Yeah. Um, King Easy was his name. And then more recently, after my hiatus of music video shoots, I remember I started doing some stuff for High Plains and that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Because you're, you're a part of High Plains. I am. Um, and you guys are really awesome. And we had such a good connection to like, um, neighbor works where they allowed us to shoot in the mill, but even just to hear you guys play, it's been awesome. And seeing like the background where everybody comes from and how you all just come together for the singular, you know, band to perform, um, other people that I got to work with, um, which I'm really thankful for is Lauren King. Uh, she yep. was, she lived in Rhode Island for a bit. She's from Smithfield with her family, but now she lives in Colorado but she's another um, musician that's super talented and she does a lot of like country folky music, mm -hmm. but Lauren's really cool. We did a, we did several videos. I was actually kind of like her, like yeah, yeah. videographer when she was like trying to like make more of a name for herself by doing like local small gigs. So that was a lot of fun doing yeah. that. Um, other, I also have been in contact with like, uh, Michael Graham, I did some stuff for him. I think we're going to do some stuff in the future. Ben Shaw is another really, really good musician. He plays a really good sax. Um, and being able to see that organically is pretty awesome. And mm -hmm. even James Toomey, like he's a pretty killer hey, drum. That's drummer. me. <laughs> hey, all right. I know um, that guy. <laughs> when I get this view in uh, Ben Shaw, kind of like just freestyle in between sets. That was oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that Giza Fest. Yeah, I forgot yeah, what yeah. happened. Something happened with the set, so we just decided yeah. to fill. It's like the, fill the Oh yeah, the power went out. I think actually, yeah, that's so what it was. Like, the uh, I think they. Uh, I remember right. The they ran out of gas at the for the generator that was powering the stage yeah. somehow. So it just went out, and since Ben and I were the only like fully acoustic instruments of sax and drums, we just like improv. Yeah for whatever it was five minutes or something like that until they could get it going. But yeah, it was fun. And uh, yeah, no, yeah cool. there's, there's some video of that. Um, and uh, no, that's, that's rad. Um, but I mean, even with that, I guess what comes to mind is like when you're making these videos, like how much of your vision can come into play with this? Or are you just trying to follow the direction of the artist or are you i mean obviously you have your own style but you know like are you like um how does that come into play i don't do a whole lot of like planning on stuff which isn't a good thing like if i sat down and maybe planned an hour of like how i want to see how projects go but a lot of the time i just do it off the cuff and i'm just like mm -hmm. running around kind of like <laughs> as i'm doing it um yeah. which is always bad but i feel like there could be more planning in the stuff that i do mm -hmm. but you know, at, at least with music videos i do put more planning into that where i'll listen to the track you know several dozen times and just try to think in my head how i want to see how it looks mm -hmm. and like those are i'm able to like get some of those shots but like it's never going to be perfect and things always change mm -hmm. um like even with like music videos, you say it's going to be like three hours, but then it's going to turn into like eight, nine, ten hours. <laughs> like the one that we did at Upper High Plains. Yeah, it's sorry like, about that, Dave. It's okay. And um, it was up and down stairs as well without an elevator. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, even like for the Sage Francis show, like I had like a pretty good understanding of like the hip hop scene and how I kind of like envision that in my head when it comes to like the editing. So like, I like shot a good portion of the show in slow motion to create more attractive clips and that will help string more emotion. Mm -hmm. And then I shot like some of the song sets in like regular motion for like, you know, like 
between like 30 seconds and like a minute or two. So like mm -hmm. I have that to like cut in between. But I don't know, it's just a lot of the stuff is just like sitting in my head of how I want to do it. But mm -hmm. I, like I need to like practice more of like writing it down and having a more concise plan. But I also just like my style of videos is kind of like all over the place, like a montage. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be a linear process. Like I think mm -hmm. I can take things and put it into a linear timeline, even though it's like out of order. So mm -hmm. it just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you have uh, your your partner at Run of the Mill, Julia Kaplan. Yep. Who's, uh, Julia. She's uh, awesome, amazing assistant. Um, one of the other products that we did, like we did the Sage Francis where I had her do a lot of, well, she took initiative too, where she took a lot of photos and some mm -hmm. video as well. But also like I had her assist me on a Slater Mill music video dance, which mm -hmm. is an in interpretive dance. And what was the uh, company that was uh, 1031's, yeah, right? Or, yeah, uh, 1031 Metamorphous Dance Company. Yeah, um, We were hired from the National Park Services at Slater Mill to mm -hmm. put together a video of a dance of an interpretive interpretive dance of the first strike that happened in Pawtucket that was led by female and created so much buzz that no one really knew about it. And like, mm -hmm. like I know that sounds wild, but like that was such a big thing at the time, but the stories never were saved that well. But now we're trying to bring that buzz back so that people understand about the first strike at Slater Mill mm -hmm. or like first strike. But yeah, um, she helped me at Slater Mill uh, being like a second shooter for me so that I can mm -hmm. have more content to scroll through. And same with like Sage Francis, she shot a lot. So I'm looking forward to like flipping through all that, seeing mm -hmm. what is needed. And also Julia was like, we should like send those photos to like the musicians and like people that we shot so that they could have like a folder of like, their images from that night so they can use it and have it for you know memories but mm -hmm. she's, she's super thoughtful and comes up with like a good plan where i'm kind of like i'm just gonna fucking do this i'm gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> think about things and she like helps me like keep my shit together so i'm not <laughs> like hurting the company by just like putting myself everywhere so yeah. like it's a, like a huge part of run of the mill and mm -hmm. like we we come from a history of like documenting pretty much anything and whatever but mm -hmm. lately we've been trying to like kind of focus in and hone in on like architecture development but we're also open to doing other projects as well as long as we as a company can be compensated for doing x x projects where it could be like jewelry or music videos and commercial product stuff mm -hmm. but we have we have a lot of different interests in what we like to document mm -hmm. and music is definitely up there and we would i kind of would like to do more of that because i think there are artists and budgets that will help both parties be happy to like create some visual stuff and i think through digital video, I think there's a lot of things that can be done. And as mm -hmm. a company at Run of the Mill, between Julia and I, we've grown the company a lot more than if I was doing it by myself. And mm -hmm. we've been able to like get grants and get awards to help bring that recognition so that we could do pretty much any type of product that we are happy with. And I think music projects are something that we could see doing more in the future. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what kind of comes to mind when you, you know, are just speaking about this now from more of like the commercial side, but still connected to music uh, is what you were bringing up as well at, at Slater Mill is that you've worked with the city of Central Falls to, yeah. you know, make yep. videos for their salsa nights, um, which, yep. you know, are just fantastic events that are held on the Roosevelt Avenue Bridge in Central Falls. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple coming up this year. There's uh, one the end of June, like that last June, uh, I think, that, like, or something. Yeah, in like but, August, like the last Friday, well, yeah. night, right? I believe. Yeah. So I mean, we can so, post those later. But, uh, um, but yeah, can you talk about you know what it was like to you know be around that 
style of music. I mean, it's it's like yeah. So I yeah. think like shooting and shooting film and photographs of different types of music is definitely an awesome thing. Like you have your hip hop, or that's something that I'm like pretty deeply rooted in because growing up with hip hop music. But then even just like what you're saying, like going to salsa night on the Roosevelt Bridge is like a totally different music scene, but the atmosphere is always going to be the same for like a live performance where mm -hmm. it's just like music, people are just vibing and it's just like mm -hmm. this on nonstop thing that's going on. Like you can walk into Lupo's or the Met and like once that, not even once that beat drop, like once when the music is playing, it's like a great feeling and it just like mm -hmm. hits your chest. And then being out to seeing all the people having fun and dancing is like a similar feeling. And then, or even just like going to like Diamond Hill up in Cumberland and going to like those music festivals and like yeah. when people uh, like when the theater, theater yeah, is like, like summer solstice, yeah. just come out like that's like something that I used to do tap dancing. So like when I see that, that's like another thing that kind of like amps you up. So it's it's cool to see different types of music. And I never knew that I would be interested in like you know like slater mill is more of an interpretive dance um but i enjoyed that you had you know black lick had his music and then lauren king has her music and like all these types of music i like fall in love with for like different mm -hmm. aspects of it so it's cool to see how music is like in my opinion is like very different but you still hold this like uh, just like this like nice personal attachment mm -hmm. to it yeah but i mean it's it's really cool to hear that you're versatile in that way i mean um yeah. you know usually and, and i'm sure it's just connections you know people but they kind of fall into their lane you know and they're like all right yeah i make music videos for this style of music or whatever because i just yeah. you know that's the that's the eye that i have and that's just what it is but i mean yeah going from shooting live performances of you know celtic and quebecois music uh outdoors to uh yeah black lick in a in a dark met you know uh uh to you know just different venues that aren't music venues is also yeah. i'm assuming going to be a challenging thing as well so um mm -hmm. yeah that's just really cool to kind of hear about that and uh you know just to see what you kind of bring to the the game here in rhode island for for music you know but but even yeah. beyond that kind of mentioning some of the other stuff that you're uh, you know an avid urban explorer um, someone that really takes their camera with them to document uh, you know these spaces abandoned mills the history that's connected to them could you talk you know a little bit about that um, talk about your favorite I guess I'll say your favorite subject but uh, I'm assuming it's that is the Superman building um, can you talk about you know uh, just what that experience is like and, and what you're trying to achieve from, you know, that piece of who you are. Um, yeah. So uh, documentary. Urban, yeah. Urban exploring was something that piqued my interest when I was super young, but I didn't really get into it until like after college, really mm -hmm. like, and like being at the Blackstone Valley tourism council, I kind of learned more about the abandoned architecture around me mm -hmm. and like, Maybe that kind of distracted me from just like looking at restaurants, which I should have been doing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, like I was able to see a lot of like abandoned places here in the Blackstone Valley, and like I remember like the Conan Thread District mills, like a good chunk of those uh, went up in flames. And after that, I got more into documenting, and then I bought a drone, and then. I took drone photography and I started documenting a lot of historic mills. Um, then I would drive through, I went through a period where I took maybe three months and I drove every day through Connecticut to find abandoned places just to like document, just take photos mm -hmm. from the outside. But yeah, and then I realized that I really like mills. So I got into that more. I also, when I started flying my drone in the city and felt comfortable, I started documenting the Superman building because we never knew what the future held for it because it was like almost a decade that it was abandoned and mm -hmm. who knew if it was going to be demolished or renovated. So I was like, I got to document as much as I can possibly. And mm -hmm. then the same thing goes for like mills and then being able to tell the story through photos or 
making short documentaries about these historic places. So, mm -hmm. but it really took off once I bought the drone because that was a whole new level of photography for me. And mm -hmm. I knew that I could capitalize on it in a sense that I could take as many photo and document more because not everybody back on the ground has a drone. So being one of mm -hmm. the few here in Rhode Island, especially in, in telling those stories, makes it an opportunity for me and anyone else who's interested in documenting from a different perspective to have mm -hmm. more of a kind of like a fan base to see what you're up to and i'm trying to get more into the commercial aspect of like documenting the renovation the demolition of these places and one i mean the superman building is definitely one of my favorites um, I really want to just go to the top of it and go into the the glass area, like where the lights turn on up at yeah, the top. Yeah. I've seen people like climbing those ladders and getting their selfies, and I just want to like get one shot of me inside that room because it'd just be amazing, like an amazing feeling to finally just do that and just yeah. check it off the bucket list. But um, yeah, I mean, the Superman building, the Conant Thread District is one of my favorite places to go explore. Mm -hmm. Although and that's like on the Pawtucket Central Falls line. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, other than that, um, I don't I don't have so many too many favorites. But if I had a guess, I feel like all of them are my favorite because I get to go <laughs> yeah. try and see them. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure like the hunt has to be an exciting part as well, too, of just that. You yeah. know, anticipation of going into a mill, not knowing what you're going to find. Um, yeah, yeah. Not I mean, really. like literally not whatever, like, like what you're going to be able to like capture with photography, but just, you know, like when we've talked, there's just like a lot of remnants that are still there from, you know, 50, yeah. 75 plus years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, it was a Paramount card, right? Where you can still right. go in yeah. and I have. <laughs> I have yeah. one, like, like the original bulb from there and like that close, yeah. like. 70s but yeah i have a lot of that which i'm actually going to be bringing to a an art exhibit at uh sharks proving cuisine in yeah. central falls on may 4th and like today me and julia were like rushing around trying to get more things ready for the show but yeah it's, it's going to be cool it's like kind of like a, a very blackstone valley type show like all the raffles and some of the sponsors are like Blackstone Valley businesses. So we're trying mm -hmm. to, you know, push those names out and push out some of these places that we visited by bringing in like archaeology finds. I partnered up with um, Old Town Trader. He gave me five baskets for the raffles. And then oh, he cool. also gave me a gift certificate like for the raffle. Yeah. Like, yeah, and then I bought a giant um, glass display case, like a tabletop one, to put some like items in there for people if they're interested in buying anything, or even just to see some of the artifacts that we found in some of these historic and abandoned places, which will be cool. So it's going to oh, be awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah, so again, that's uh, Thursday, May 4th at Sharks uh, at Central Falls Landing. Um, it's from 6 to 8.30 and yep, um 30 p.m um it's gonna be a lot of fun we have a lot of in my opinion original historic drone shots of abandoned places that you might be mm -hmm. familiar with or just brand new to um we're gonna have archaeology finds like just like random things that we found like to give an example we went into an abandoned hospital in rhode island Mm -hmm. And so I have some of the, I have an X, X ray tray, some of the syringes, and like wow. not from the hospital. But even just like one really cool find, find that I have is I went to this one mill in Rhode Island and I found like maybe over 200, 300 workers' ID badges. So they're like these small like little pins, right? So it's their, their face, the name of the mill and their ID number. Um, so like, it's kind of weird to think that these people are just a number inside of a mill, like not even their names are on it, but just like yeah. the name. Of the I mean, that still kind of <laughs> happens today with Walmart and stuff like that. It's like employee number, you know, so. 
Yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty interesting that it's still it is happening today. But I mean, I just feel like that's always going to be a thing unless something mm-hmm. changes. But yeah. yeah, like we have like a bunch of those pins and other archaeology finds from historic places that are just filled with history. So mm-hmm. it's cool to bring that to the forefront in a gallery exhibit just to honor that. And yeah. then as a part of our opening for the company, as we're trying to move forward as a digital preservation group and to like unveil some of the history here in New England. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this is a, a free event to attend. Um, but yeah, you're more than welcome to, you know, mm. get a drink at the bar and, yeah. uh, you know, possibly purchase uh, some prints. Whoa, whoa, or... whoa, 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 whoa. No, you're not. No. Gonna have... no, you're absolutely right. But you're forgetting something that's very important. I talked to Akbar from Royal Chicken and yep. we are going to be having food catered by Royal Chicken. Just so people know. Whoa. This Royal is... Chicken will be there we're gonna news have... this is what you get through podcasting right now you get like the inside scoop yeah that and for those royal... of you that don't know about royal chicken you're about to find out yeah you definitely don't want to play around like you may say that you have had some good chicken in the past but the chicken here like the chicken wings or the the legs like they are seasoned so well and their popcorn chicken and condiments are just spot on so I mean, if you don't come to just check out the art, at least come and try out some new food. We have Sharks Proving Cuisine downstairs. We have mm-hmm. the event center where they'll be serving alcohol. And we'll have um, Royal Chicken uh, cater some food for the event. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a good time. And it's also to help try to introduce these other companies and businesses through mm-hmm. raffles. And, yeah. and also, like who, are, who are some of the people in the raffle? Yeah, like so contributed our support, you know, supporting very, that. That's a very good question. So we have Rhode Island Spirits, we have Old Town Trader, we have my goodness, CW Lanes, we have I believe it's Laser Tag and Movie Passes. We have um what's the name of the vineyard up in Cumberland? Diamond Hill Vineyard? Yep, Diamond Hill Vineyard. We have a ten person has for a wine tasting which is a phenomenal wow. deep, a phenomenal thing and then we have bottles of wine uh white dog distillery hat we have some limoncello so mm-hmm. we have a lot of things we have top shelf vintage in there for a gift card um honestly there's like so many businesses that it's hard to say but i will tell you that it's going to be a very blackstone valley event um where That's we're cool. trying to these awesome businesses um and i think that the people that come will be really surprised to see all the good things that are happening here in blackstone valley and you Mm -hmm. know i have people come down to blackstone valley rhode island to experience it and even just like central falls landing is like another really good place because we have the kayaks the canoe um Mm -hmm. rentals uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like there's going to be a lot of things to do. And even just around the Blackstone Valley, we have some really good things happening. So we want to make sure we include that as much as possible in the event mm-hmm. so that people yeah. know on the map. And then you have a few speakers as well. Can you just kind of mention that? Yeah, so well? we have several speakers. We have Bob Billington, who is the founder of the Blackstone Valley Tourism Council. I figured he fit because he is the founder of the tourism district um, and having that on the map is very important. And being in the Blackstone Valley, a lot of the work that we do is found here in Blackstone Valley. So I want to at least get another introduction introduction to the public who are new to this to like know and learn more about the Blackstone Valley. We have Christian Calderon from NeighborWorks, which is an organization that's a nonprofit that helps support um, affordable housing here in Blackstone Valley, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. And then we also have one of our really cool friends, Linda Weisinger. Um, She works at Pawtucket Central Falls Development um, and they also do affordable housing for uh, people that are facing different challenges and need a place to live. And I I love all three of the missions from the Blackstone Valley to the affordable housing and commercial spaces. Cause I think 
we're trying to like bring people to a beautiful place and we also are trying to help house people here in the Blackstone Valley. So it's 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 mm -hmm. definitely a wonderful thing that I have these three speakers who are able to talk more um more about their mission and statement to like bring more awareness here and and these three people are, are people that we are working with to help mm -hmm. bring more sustainable tourism or help document and bring more awareness to the affordable housing here in Rhode Island. Yeah. No, it's rad that you brought that in as well. And, and again, just kind of shows the, uh, the span that, that you uh, can capture as an artist, you know, the diversity of everything that, you know, the different uh, prongs yeah. of, of all yeah. of your work, you know, that you're not like, I'm just an artist. This is what I shoot. This is what I do. Come look at it. I mean, it just, it's really inspiring to see how you try to tie in all of these different pieces of who you are as an artist. And um, right. yeah, I just commend you uh, on all of your work for that. So yeah, again, come down to sharks event center, May 4th from six to eight 30, uh, central falls landing, uh, 15 Madeira Ave. Um, it's right along the Blackstone river. Like Dave was saying, you know, come down, grab some food, uh, check it out, you know, check out central falls landing. It's a, it's a beautiful spot. Um, you know, come back at a different time. There's kayak rentals. There's, uh, just boat tours that you can take. There's river cruises. There's, uh, a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, if, if people do want to connect with you and, you know, hire you for any of this type of work, uh, you know, make a music video or, you know, one thing we didn't really even touch upon, but like you've had several of your photographs used for album artwork. I mean, we used it for high planes, but you've worked with strip mall as well. They've used some yeah. uh, photos for their album, um, you know, artwork, but if, if you're looking for that, if you need, cool picture uh uh yeah. for your next album or anything like that how can people you know connect with you and and reach out yeah i feel like not everybody has social media but i will say like i will give you my cell phone number it's 401-575-6915 your best bet is just to call so i know it's real and that people are actually in need of help and services so just give me a call i'm more than welcome to you know uh, take the call or if I need to call you back if it's a voicemail um, I mm -hmm. try to keep it as personal as possible we can set up a meeting to meet up and chat about more otherwise you can fo you can also follow me on Instagram at run of the mill shop um, there that's where I'm most active I don't use Facebook as much I don't have it on my phone so it's only like when I'm at the office or late at night when I'm about to go to sleep so just uh you know instagram and just shoot me a message or just definitely i highly recommend just giving a call so that yeah, we can cool. communicate and they can check out some of your work at run of the mill dot shop as yes well. that is sorry yes <laughs> my website is run of the mill dot shop you can go there to check out the work check out the services our mission and seeing how we're taking a direction into the development and demolition and historical architecture path but that mm -hmm. does not mean that we're not open to learning and producing different content for your businesses. Or even if you just want to just chat about other things, we got mm -hmm. you. Yeah. I highly recommend that Dave will take care of you. Just a good guy to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, just one more question for you here. Um, and uh, you know, like with, the various things that you've done, you know, that especially if they're kind of connected with music uh, yeah. or that you've been a part of, like, what would you say has been your, you know, coolest thing that you've done or like, you know, your greatest accomplishment that's kind of been around that, you know, from videos or whatever else, you know? Yeah, I think definitely the Sage Francis show was probably one of the best highlights that is surrounded by music because doing that show really unleashed a lot of emotions and like experiences that I had from the past where I was doing like music videos or like working at Cumulus Providence, Rhode Island, and just like having that like hip hop vibe. I think that kind of was just a very nostalgic feeling for me mm -hmm. to know that I could get back into that anytime I wanted. Um, and I think that's something that I could have like a later discussion with James or like other music people in the city of Providence to like help tell those stories, but also have that fun to get back into that scene. 
Mm-hmm. So I this could be, you know, another chapter that I'm opening up where from the Sage Francis show, like I was able to get back into that hip hop scene of like documenting. So like now I'm like looking forward to like editing that. And then that I think is opening up doors for future projects mm-hmm. along the preservation work that we're doing here at Run of the Mill. Yeah. But yeah, with that, you know, before I let you go, I mean, I know that you won a Providence Preservation Award. Um, could you talk about that and what that means to you as well? Yeah, so I think um, it was really funny. Like one day, my friend Rachel Robinson from the Pre- uh, Providence Preservation Society, like, emailed me saying that I was nominated. And then I was like, oh, okay, cool. I was nominated <laughs> for a fan favorite award. So I like told the public about it and like after receiving the award is like this is definitely like the direction that i want to take like professionally Mm -hmm. and like in the long term of like documenting because it's it's a really good market for drone photography it opens up a lot of doors Mm -hmm. and have to like that award helps build up credibility so people can see that your company and what you do as a person and your beliefs are in tune with just like a higher good or Mm -hmm. it's just like in tune with like more positive actions as opposed to just like just like taking photos and just putting it out there transactional kind of stuff like yeah you have a bigger goal to what you're trying to do yeah yeah exactly like there's more meaning to it it's like bigger Mm -hmm. than just like taking a photo and just yeah so i think (laughs) um it's definitely you know, I think a lot of good things are going to happen in like the architecture development demolition, as well as the music scene. Um, Cause I think with the content that we're able to produce and put out there, we'll create more opportunities in those two markets for us here at run of the mill. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, this has been awesome, Dave. It's been really yeah. cool to, uh, yeah, get to learn a little bit more about your vision and your, your skill, to be honest. I mean, I've known you for a while now and uh, I truly appreciate you sincerely, but even just kind of learning tonight what needs to go into everything that you create was just really insightful. And, and I appreciate you sharing that with everyone that's listening. No, absolutely. No, it's always a fun time being able to like share these like stories and tidbits because like I don't always do that on my own mm-hmm. when I like vlogs or anything. So I'm glad to share and educate people on what it is that I do and how I do it. I don't have to look to feel this. I know you with my eyes closed. I feel this hard work in tears. I'm working hard for the coming years. I've laid my hand on so many threads. Let's hope this one keeps me tied to you. I love abandoned places, you know I do. I see you floating up the stairway. The dust you kick up turns to gold. You see this dark place I've been living in that you dare to call your home. Because a shiny, pretty new place just won't do And if you couldn't tell I love abandoned places, I love them well
to look to feel this I know you with my eyes closed I feel this hard work in tears Working hard for the coming years I laid my hand on this one thread And it's kept me tied to you I love abandoned places, you know I do I love abandoned places And I love you